Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What is going on guys? BANGLE again here coming back at you with another video today. Back on NCAA 14 Ozark State Outlaws Dynasty. Got a little bit to do before we start season number two. Including making our schedule... And we have a couple of open matchups. Right now, this is, you know, what's locked in. Louisiana Monroe, Texas State, Arkansas State. Nothing in Week 11 right now. And then Louisiana, South Alabama, Western Kentucky, and Troy. Now, we can change some of these things around. Currently, we're penciled in to face Washington in Week 7. We have Duke, Illinois, Georgia Tech, and FCS East currently on the schedule. What do we want to do here? I'd like to get another ranked opponent in there. I definitely don't want to play Illinois. We could play Duke, maybe. Who's free? We play Auburn that week. Iowa. Michigan. Michigan State. Notre Dame. Virginia Tech. I kind of want to play Notre Dame. Let's put Notre Dame on the schedule. Week 5. Week 5 to 7 is going to be tough. Even Georgia Tech, which is apparently a rivalry game, I'm just finding out. I don't know why we'd be a rival of Georgia Tech. That doesn't make a ton of sense. All right, I've decided on Houston. Who's a ranked team, so they're not terrible. But we have three ranked teams on the schedule. It's going to start with a bang. We are playing Houston in the opener, I guess, today. And then we have Georgia Tech, Notre Dame, Duke, Washington, I almost want to change it to not be Washington. Who else is available? It might be Washington. I almost want to make it LSU instead. That's a little Louisiana, Louisiana matchup. I'm going to add LSU. It's going to be LSU over Washington, Louisiana Monroe, Texas State, Arkansas State, Louisiana Lafayette, Raging Cajun, South Alabama, Western Kentucky, uh, Kentucky, and Troy. That's our schedule. Kind of fun. It's going to be really tough. But that's all right. Time to redshirt players. Who are we redshirting? Quarterback, for sure. We are redshirting Chris Porter. 100%. We are going to redshirt any freshman I want to stick around. We already, we can't, well, I'm not going to redshirt Rob Gaither twice. You can't. Antonio Madison will be redshirt. I'm really trying to do a lot of the offensive line that I know is not going to play. Uh, but we don't really have a ton of options. Could redshirt Kingsley Duckett. We don't really have the uh, the ability to do that. We're going to redshirt Shelton Neal. Terrence Hodges, we don't really have a choice. Def one of these defensive tackles is getting redshirt for sure. I think it's going to be Donnell Mason. Ooh, what, 6'7"? These guys are both real slow. I'm going to redshirt Scott Ford. It's not like we have to redshirt the entire team by the way. So, I think Willie Mays... I want six corners. So, uh, I think we're probably about done. How good is Ernest Harmon? He's already been red shirt. We don't really have a choice. Those are our red shirt players. It'll be interesting. We'll see them next year. So, it is a big shame that we can't... Like, you know, it's obviously the, the NCAA rules. So, we can't play Devin White, obviously, this year. We can't play Hunter Register. And we can't play Mike Lee. They've all been redshirt already to begin with. But they will be on the roster next year. They're only going to get better. Devin White will be like an 85, 86 overall. So that is incredible. It was an insane transfer. It, again, sucks we can't use him, but we knew that going in. So we have a decent team. And it's time to set up our recruiting board for the season. Might really focus on uh, pipeline states this year. And we're not going to create any prospects this time around. I might set that up for you guys in the future if you'd like to uh, be in the class. Not right now, though. All right, so our pipeline states, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Louisiana. Pretty expected, to be honest. And I believe you might want to focus on Louisiana. Keep guys in state. And there are some really good players. Omar Williams, 6'4", 4'3", 840, five-star receiver. No interest in Ozark State. 
Mike Chase has some interest. He's in the top 200. I like that. But I do... I, I'm going to try to get a lot of really good players. Including, you know, some five stars if, if possible. So I've added a lot of really good players to the recruiting board. Of course, this is scouting only. Uh, no quarterback. Put one running back on there. Mike Chase. No fullback. A wide receiver. I added some really, really good players. Omar Williams who is a five-star, Ryan Hand, who is also a five-star. We're obviously not going to be able to get both of these guys if we even get one. But I tried to go after, you know, the, the pipeline aspect to a lot of these players, and then just Ryan Hand looked really good. Brady Fields, Corey Stevens, CJ Chambers. If anyone particularly stands out, Don Jones, a tackle, uh, at, excuse me, a tight end. Added a bunch of tackles in here. And, um... I think we should be able to lure some of these players to Ozark State. I really do. A lot of these guys look like they'd be fantastic fits with Ozark State. Mike McKenzie. He's in Florida. Louisiana's not that far. I mean, a little bit. I guess it's not in-state. Um, but I added some really, really good players. We'll see if we're able to get them. We'll see what these overalls end up being. I am going to scout them. If anyone stands out... We'll definitely stop. Just want to get you guys familiarized with some of these names. And um, we'll certainly have to see. We'll certainly have to see Bobby France, Kent Bryant, Trey Sullivan, and then no kicker or punter. One athlete, David Alvarez. We will see. So Corey Stevens is a gem. 74 overall. We'll go over a bunch of the stuff at the end. And, you know, see if, uh, you know, I don't know. Gem for Corey Stevens, though, regardless. He is currently not interested in Ozark State, but he will be. He will be. So I have 15 players that I couldn't scout. Scouted a bunch of these guys. Um, not a whole lot of gems. I think I only saw one gem. Most guys are pretty much true to their overall. A lot of them went down a little bit. Some of them went up a little bit. You know, it's the way of the road. It's the way it is. And we'll get more points. We'll scout over the course of the season. And that's our recruiting board right now. It's a lot of top guys. I assume it's going to change quite a bit over the course of the season. But enough of that. I am ready to start the season, advancing to the regular season, and get season two officially underway. Right now, we're not that far back, and a lot of these players, as you know, I'm sure should come as no surprise for anyone that's actually played NCAA. We're going to be offering scholarships to a lot of them, and then trying to stay in the race on a lot of these players. We really can't afford to make too many mistakes. We're in the lead on some players, but I don't know. I think this first week will be really telling to determine who we're actually going to be able to get and who we're not. Mike Marshall looks really good. He looks almost better than, uh, well, definitely better, I would say, than Derek Higgins, who we got. And he's interested in the school. Absolute scholarship coming in. I think it's important to scout our non-scouted players just so we know what we're dealing with. And even though it does cost, you know, quite a few points, I think it's going to be worth it in the long run. There's a gem. Marlon Christian, a guard, 75 overall, currently not super interested in Ozark State, but uh, he's definitely someone we're going to want to bring in. Try to get the points uh, around as best as I could. Probably have a bit too many in Mike Marshall rate for right now. I try to put my eggs in a lot of baskets, actually. Whether that turns out uh, great or terrible, we will see. The fate of the dynasty depends on it. But are you guys ready for number 20, Houston? This might be a long episode. We had a week one commitment like that. Ryan Gordon commits to Miami. Ooh, Houston won, which means they're at number 18 now. That's fun. All right, just got done doing a little bit of recruiting. I'll probably update you guys in the next couple of episodes, but it is time. Number 18, Houston. This game probably will not be easy, as we are a 70 overall pretty much across the board, and Houston is actually an 88. Ozark State players are confident they can hang with number 18 Houston to start 2014. I would, if, you know, them if nobody else. All right, Outlaws, Cougars. Do we have to face Ed Oliver today? Oh, no. No, no, no. I like how our top players... Two of them, two of the three, are not even eligible to play right now. And then I guess, I guess Ed Oliver isn't in this roster. 
All right. Clearly, it's a little bit of a mismatch when we go to the tail of the tape. But uh, you know what? If there's a heart rating, it'd be zero for Houston, 99 for Ozark State. Here we are, actually at dual field. Taking on Houston, we have the, the home field advantage, which will be our only advantage, other than heart, of course, which we've talked about. And guns, maybe, because we're the outlaws. Might want to gunsling a little bit. Just take out some of the players right at the knee. All right, Byron Fulton is our returner to start things off. We also have our new running back back there. Pedro Goddard is not starting. What do you mean? The depth chart has been changed. Who, who made this decision? No, 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 no. Colby Spencer is listed at number one. It was my understanding as a, a junior college transfer, he would be eligible. Does he have to sit out as well? Mm, depth chart looks all right. I don't know why he wouldn't be in. Nope. Here we go. The new tandem of Scott Lewis and of Colby Spencer. First play will be a handoff to Scott Lewis, and there's absolutely nowhere to go. This Houston defensive line might be pretty elite, and they don't even appear to have Ed Oliver. Oh, no, that looks like a number 10 on the defensive line. We might as well just check the depth chart. That might be Ed Oliver at right defensive tackle there. I don't know how many other defensive tackles will be wearing number 10. And he would have been on the team at this point. But number 10 for Houston, that was, maybe that was 90. Yeah, I don't see an Ed Oliver unless he's listed at 3-4 defensive tackle. He is. There he is. Right end. All right. Ed Oliver, only an 86 overall. He would have been a bit younger, but you see him, I guess, right there at, at right defensive end of the 3-4. Let's get off to a hot start on offense. Okay, that was... That was poor. Third and 11. I'm looking to continue this vertical style offense that we showcased a lot last year. We've got all the same weapons, but they're a little bit better this time around. But that defensive line from Houston is no joke. And if nobody gets open, it's going to be a long day. Zach Vaughn in the backfield takes down Colby Spencer. We tried to scramble and find some space. And there was no space to be found. Oh my god. That is such an unfortunate thing that's just happened. That is a massive play. Kyle Allen on the read option. Almost looked like a triple option. Might have been. Rushes for 30 yards. And, of course, they got to be a hurry-up offense. you got to be kidding me. I thought I had him in the backfield. And I didn't, clearly. Dude, I don't, I'm right on him. How, how am I not getting a tackle? It's another option. Slaughter's just standing there as we're getting slaughtered. Another big rush by Kyle Allen. He has two attempts for 50 yards. I think we have absolutely bit off a little bit more than we could chew here. Oh, great stop. It's going to be all read option and triple option as their quarterback's actually injured. Kyle Allen is down and being helped off the field. Their backup will come into the game. That was a great stop by the defense. And that backup is uh, of an unknown name at the current moment. It's a run up the middle. Catalan breaks two tackles and is into the end zone. Oh, my God, man. Yeah, he's going to stay eating, it looks like. No one can tackle. Season one. Point five. It's not even. A t it's not even season two. All right, offense back on the field if you can call it that. And we're gonna look for some space here. Try to buy some time, and of course, get used to sliding. Can't afford to turn over the ball today. Oh, how do you commit to the running back with a dual threat like Colby Spencer? They played that really well somehow. Third and fourteen after a dump off went for negative yardage. And that pass is not completed. Tried to get it to Ryan Muller, but he couldn't hold on. It is difficult to move the ball against such a good team. I'll tell you that. You got to be kidding me. Tackle him! Please wrap up. We're getting annihilated on the ground. Do they even have a passing yard? They don't need to, obviously. But I don't think so. We need to get on the board. 
This offense is worse than when we had Pedro Goddard here. But I think the problem is none of the receivers are getting open. That's intercepted. Come on, man. Picked off by Williams. It's an intercept. I, I don't know how to tackle. Clearly, I don't even have a clue. Khalil Williams picks it off. I thought we had a step with, you know, the receiver. Clearly didn't. And it's very quickly 21-0. Uh, I mean, we did this to ourselves when we put such a good opponent on our uh, schedule to start things off. Let's just try to bounce back. It's been a rough start for Colby Spencer. But we're going to take what the defense gives us now. And we're going to try to get back in this football game. It's not over. It's just we have an uphill battle. That's open down the middle. Roland Francisco. His speed upgrade in the offseason isn't enough to take it to the house. But 45 yards just short of the end zone as Colby Spencer delivers a perfect pass. Hand off. Goes to Scott Lewis. He stood up but gains three. Gets us just a few more yards closer to the end zone. The ultimate goal of getting back in this game. Hand off. Back to Lewis. Powers over him. Two yard touchdown run. And we are on the board. Great drive, honestly. Started off a little bit shaky, but we turned things around. Couple big plays, and now we're only down by two touchdowns. It's only the first quarter, and I don't think we're going to go for two. No reason. you got to be kidding me. Chase him down! Thank you! We can't allow 50-yard returns. We're already allowing that on offense almost every play. We need to step up. Oh my God. Duke Catalan's gone. Oh, forced out at the 20. 33-yard gain. We're just going to come out in a, in a way larger setup. Pitch it. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? No one can wrap up. We need tackling. No one is tackling at all. It's so frustrating. We have these stopped, and they break the tackles. 28-7, just as quickly as it was 21-0, uh, it seems. They score so quickly. That's down the field again. Roland Francisco. That's going to be our target, man. No one is covering Roland Francisco. He's fumbled the ball. <laughs> I hate this game. Like, it's, it's got to be a joke at some point, dude. Running a screen! You got to intercept that, outlaw. You have to intercept that. It's third and 11. We've actually done all right on this drive. You know, at stopping them. And that is going to be probably completed. Oh, wow. Nice toe drag. 15 yards. And a fresh set of downs now for the Cougars. I will cry myself to sleep, undoubtedly. Oh, I tried to cover that. It's just pancake blocks over all over the field and broken tackles. Kyle Postma. Postma. It doesn't matter. Anyone could do this. They're going to break tackles. It could be, you know, wheelchair. Please get pressure. Tackle him. He still manages to fall forward. Three-yard rush. I don't, know, I don't know how no one on this team t can tackle at all. Like, I can understand maybe, you know, every once in a while. It's a broken tackle every time at first contact. And that's wide open. Oh, uh, uh, another read option. Oh, big hit. We're going to force a field goal try. Which will 100% be made. There's no two ways about it. It'll be 31-7. It's a tough, tough one. Oh, we got Jake Rodriguez downfield. That is not where it needs to be. Third down and six. This is a huge third down. We're going to roll out. We're just going to take it with Colby Spencer. He's got the legs. He has the first down easy. 31-14 is not so bad. We just got to make sure it gets to that. Third and five. Another absolute must-convert situation. 
And we have an open receiver. It's Darren Maxwell, and he drops the ball. We are going for it, though. Need to go bigger or go home in this situation. Hopefully, we don't have to go home. Hopefully, something gets open. And uh, that is not caught. Probably would have got the first down with forward progress. Maybe not. Got a little bit skittish in the pocket. Tried to roll out. But, of course, Roland Francisco drops the ball. Colby Spencer, minor injury. We'll turn to the game later. We're going to put in Pedro Goddard, or Pedro Goddard in the meantime. Just play it safe. Get off the block. Oh, my God. I hate myself. I actually, well, I hate tackling in this game. I really do. My fault, obviously, but bro, what do you want me to do? 60-yard run. Good block. There we go. Turn on the burner, Scott Lewis. He doesn't have him. This is a really weird play. I don't see it working out, but we got a blocker. The reason I did not throw to number 76, he is an offensive tackle. Colby Spencer hasn't been terrible. 10 for 16, 135. Of course, the interception. And a litany of rush yards to go along with the rest. But Jake Rodriguez, you gotta bowl him over. Thank you. We should probably try to just manage the clock a little bit. We really should. However, I'm not. I almost feel like... I don't know. We, we need to score so many points. Just not enough time in the game. Oh my god, what a play. Waiting on the crosser to get over, and DJ Jenkins makes just a better play. Great contain. Of course, beat the offensive line. Made a nice diving stop. And uh, third and 12. We need a touchdown. Doesn't have to be this play. But that would kind of be nice. There it is. Oh my goodness, Colby. It's not even close. We had it. That's a touchdown. A field goal doesn't help as much down 38-7. to It doesn't. We got to go for it here. Rolling out. I need a block. I need a block. You can't just run forward. We had it. If you blocked for a second. Don't trust the arm of Colby Spencer right now. Absolutely brutal. Okay. Okay. Get just just get back. Colby Spencer injured again. We're gonna we're gonna bring back Pedro Goddard. We're taking a deep shot. And that is dropped. As that probably would have been a touchdown. He should have broken any tackle. Well, 38-7 to at halftime. We, we were not ready for prime time. We were not ready to face a ranked team. So I can only imagine how bad the game against LSU is going to go. And the game against, uh, what do we have, Notre Dame on the schedule. It's going to be brutal. It, excuse me? You guys' guess is as good as mine on that. Y'all know what happened there? Please tell me. Because I have no idea where anybody was. Roland Francisco beat him. Great pass from Colby Spencer. Broken tackle from Roland Francisco as well. I'd like to say we're not out of it. but I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to be able to say that. Deep over the top. Oh my goodness, perfect pass to Rob Gaither. 41-yard touchdown, getting every single yard through the air. What a pass. That was dropped into a bucket. Unreal. I mean, that's a big play potential with this team. We just haven't been nearly consistent enough. And the fumble from Roland Francisco, we were starting to get a little bit of momentum. That one really hurt. Please, please wrap up, Fisher. Oh, my goodness. He swerved out of the dive. How did he know it was coming? Touchdown. Ah, I want to die. What is happening, man? We're so bad. We are so bad. Go, Colby. There we go. His longest run of the series. He's having some game, man, but 
We've scored 14 points, so what does it matter? Oh, there we go. That's a good gain. 18 yards for Scott Lewis on the pickup. Just finding the open man. That's open. Great pass to Ryan Muller. 24-yard touchdown. And we scored 21 points. It's just, the problem is we've allowed 52. Uh, 20 points up to this point against the Houston defense is, it, you know, not that bad. It's almost inspiring for the future. So we're going to go for two here. As Pedro Goddard's in the game. The real big issue, though, is how are we going to be able to stop anyone when we're on defense? We just, we've proven not to be able to do it at all today. Lost a lot of senior leadership, we'll say, as the two-point conversion to Scott Lewis is good. Down by 30. This is a tough task to come back. And Spencer, bruise hand out for the next quarter. It's a great way to step up on defense. Kachow! Lightning McQueen makes a good stop. Still doesn't put us anywhere close to back in this game. But it is third and 14. We can change up the defense a little bit and uh, do our very best to stop them from picking up the first down. And then maybe get a touchdown, go for two. Make it 52 to 30. There'd be no real reason to go for two. And Outlaws burned. Oh my God. Ooh, man coverage. This can only go badly. Except for it doesn't. Kyle Allen, who's back in the game, goes down in the backfield. Daryl Bradford picked up the sack, and now it's 4th and 15. I gotta say, anytime we only allow 3 points, we only allow 500 plus yards here, it's gotta be a win for us. Because we're improving. Oh, and that field goal hit the bar. It hit the post, I should say. Just snuck in. That's open. Great pass. It's Gaither. Rob Gaither's been super involved today. That's Pedro Goddard dropping it in there, by the way. Third and ten. Kind of need a conversion here if we have any hope. And there it is. It's Rob Gaither. All right. Maybe he's going to be the uh, new guy for us. Took Ryan Muller's spot. We promoted him. Giving him some chances today in week one. Or week two, I guess. Our first game. And he's played pretty well. Oh, I really wanted to throw it to Jake Rodriguez. Just didn't think we'd have the arm. Wide open over the middle. Gabriel Timmons holds on. What a critical catch to keep the drive alive. It wasn't third down, or it wasn't fourth down, but still. Would have been a tough fourth down conversion. That's for sure. Let's score before the end of the third quarter. Here's a handoff. Scott Lewis is just short, but the first down was achieved, which means the clock stops very briefly while we get set. Snap it again. Hand off. Scott Lewis, touchdown. His second of the game, I believe. He also has a two-point conversion. It's probably going to be pretty good for us. We're bridging the gap a little bit. Still, obviously, down by a lot. Going for two again, making it a 25-point game. For whatever reason if we convert which we do Goddard walks in only down by 25 that's gonna be a touchdown right oh yep Parrish gets absolutely pancaked and he is gone if there was any doubt Duke Catalan 58 yards and is probably looking to get the Heisman right after this game let's just give it to him how many yards does he have it's got to be close to 300. And we are back down 62-30. Our last three drives have all been touchdowns. That's encouraging. And what's also encouraging? Our guys back in the game. Colby Spencer. That's what I like to see. Just going for the big plays, hoping we can connect. It's just not where it needs to be, Colby. Third and ten. Somebody's got to get open. We're going deep. It's Rob Gaither. What a beast he's been today. 
Keeps getting open, and you know what? He keeps catching the ball. It's a rare trait. How? Oh, my God. He stepped in front of it. I didn't think he'd be able to. Yeah, he does. And he has... Almost a pick six. I really thought he had a step. That's open down the middle. Gabriel Timmons. Somehow continues to be our highest. Or our best performing tight end. Maybe he's high. I don't know. He's best performing tight end. And he's third on the depth chart at the position. This even goes to last season. 0 for 2 today on fourth down. But we are going for it again. Got a good feeling about this one. Darren Maxwell in the game. We're actually going to give him the ball too. And Darren Maxwell is going to get it. Pretty positive gain as well. That's open. Touchdown. Who but Rob Gaither. Number 88. It's wild. Houston's got a nice 69. I don't even know how I didn't notice that. Probably just too sad. That's open though. Ryan Muller. Oh my god, he almost got it. I'm absolutely defeated. I think putting up 36 points is admirable. Just, we can't let up 69. However nice that may be, we're never going to be in a game where that happens. This, this wasn't a game for a while. I have to figure out how to shut down the read option. And the pass, and the runs, and I need to stop everything. And we don't, we don't, stop anything particularly well and that is the ball game we uh we i don't think we suck i think the offense was okay we held them under 300 pass yards wow wow what a what an unbelievable achievement so that was a tough game <laughs> that was that kind of sucked we got a bye week next week and then we play Georgia Tech in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this slaughter. Even though we have Sandoval slaughtered on our team, we you know we got slaughtered. And he did absolutely nothing. We're gonna get better. I don't know how yet. <laughs> I don't have any idea how. But uh it'll be a long process, I'm sure. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I do hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.